looking to order here. And uh, it looks like it's 610 local. Uh, welcome to our September board meeting here for Anderson Military Academy. Um, first, we'll go ahead and start with the agenda here. <clears throat> and uh, we'll go with the Pledge of Allegiance in the moment of silence. <clears throat> evening for our September 26th meeting. All right, we, have a motion. we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right, next thing on the agenda, public comments. Do we have anyone for public comments? No public comments? All right, thank you. All right, next thing on the agenda here is approval of the meeting minutes from our August 29th meeting um, here at APA. Can I get a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion to approve the meetings from our um, August meeting. August 29th. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right, next thing on the agenda is the approval of the CEO report. Um, it was just handed out here. Uh, Jill just handed it right off the press. So I'll give everyone a few minutes uh, just to kind of look over it here, and then we can put it up for motion if uh, anyone's satisfied. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Light color here tonight. So. Happy homecoming week, everyone. <laughs> about 5,000 things happening all yeah, at once. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of clouds in my living room right now to dance. But it's everyone's perfect. I hope so. Mm -hmm. see two grant categories that uh, we're going to be getting 27 plus 25 more. That'll help the cause. than we have been. Uh, we're just still waiting for our electrical panels. Gotcha. Uh, and then it doesn't really impact the functionality of anything, but then um, we are getting used to the new valves and they're going to have to come in and do some training. The biggest anticipated challenge is going to be start turning the heat on. Um, we do now have the boilers running year round so that it can help um, control the actual temperatures. but. Seeing how the valves will work because 
prior to the Valve project, you either had Hades or you had like a frozen tundra. Mm -hmm. um, so learning how and we've had both in this room. Oh yeah, we? yeah. Well, it well. Depends on what mood it's in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we have had much more consistent uh, cooling uh, throughout this fall, and obviously, uh, the weather has been very. <laughs> kind of helping us practice to how long the AC can work. Um, and the summer weather has been pretty nice to have um, so that we can actually troubleshoot everything in real time. But um, the computer program, being able to actually see the functionality of each individual um, unit is really helping us fix the mechanical issues. So like I said, when, when the temperature was getting up to about 100, uh, that was true test because that would have been horrible a year ago. Yeah. So. Okay. Close. We're, I think we're at like 99.3% complete on their invoice. So, um, we also, and I should have included this in my report, um, <laughs> we had a $15,000 uh, uh, allowance because they weren't entirely sure with some electrical wiring and with the valves that we were going to have to. Um, replacing the isolation valves mm -hmm. and they sent me a notice last week that they're not going to have to use that. So oh, good. Get a little bit back. Yeah, that's good. Right. I think that's why there's another Okay. Good All right. If anyone doesn't have anything, I'll put a motion to, uh, can I get a motion to approve the CEO report presented this evening? I move that we approve the CEO report presented. <laughs> I'll be glad to second that. All right, we have a motion that's second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Regarding the bus, <coughs> yeah, um, is this the, uh, I mean, it just surprises me that that gas station would even be trying to use to fill the bus up? That was a surprising decision, wasn't it? Um, so the <coughs> obviously we have Taylor's gas station here, and then we have McClure's down there. Right. But the diesel at McClure's it takes like forty-five seconds or so to put like one gallon of diesel in, um, and so it takes thirty-five to forty-five minutes to really fill up the charger bus or um, the yellow bus. And so Brother Darwin has been taking out the Kalas, but he has a trick where he pulls in and then he backs out instead of. Um, and our bus driver um, had anticipated that he was going to fill it up and then the whole thing didn't happen so she went and did it and then to avoid a car hit that black box. So, no clue on estimate of damage. It's not. It's mainly cosmetic. There's no functionality impacted. And it's still grounded. Yeah. Although they let us drive it to the game last night. So. I was going to say, so what's the impact of getting everybody to all their sports? Um, so right now, it should be fine with what yeah. we have. It does impact a field trip tomorrow because we were supposed to take our own bus, which is always less expensive than having to um, contract out. And we were going to take two of our mini buses um, because now the mini bus that they grounded mislabel thing from the manufacturer mm -hmm. now we can drive it again so I don't know <laughs> uh, so that now that field trip which was supposed to cost $85 in transportation is now going to be about three fifty. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we want to get the bus fixed as right. quickly as possible um, but we'll be out there mostly although most of this is just banging it back out so and reattaching the little it's totally easy. I'm sure it'll be great and they'll look just brand new. Fortunately, we have a lot of home events this week, so. It does make it nice to be in home. Mm -hmm. All right, any yeah, other? I'm sorry. Any other further discussion? Now, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you for that, Jill. Next thing on the agenda is our financial report. Okay, I think most of you have you. heard. I, I <laughs> left my folder at home with my notes and my large print script. So I'm actually going to try to read that report I send out pre-leading to all of you here. So if I'm a little choppy tonight, you'll say, gosh, it just like he normally does it. So anyhow, 
Uh, if any of you were trying to read our large cash flow spreadsheet, you probably were rather puzzled because when you got down to the very bottom, the bottom line, you noticed that there were two different lines for our cash net income and they were different. Unfortunately, both were losses, but one was a better loss than the other. So that's always a little confusing, which one is which. So uh, I, um, we won't get into the details. Certainly, Andrea, if, if, you, uh, if my explanation was not uh, right on the money, I'm sure she can give you the gory details. But <laughs> what happened, <clears throat> um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong on anything here, but it looks like what happened to us was September and March appear to be three payroll months. Now, how do I know that? Well, because if you pick any salary line like instructional salaries, you'll notice that uh, it goes from 200 up to about 400 in those two months. So that's maybe a quick way to determine what those three months of pay, three payroll months are. Um, so the first payroll in September inadvertently got deposited on the 31st of August. And, uh, of course, in our budget, we still have the amount for the three September payrolls. So you've got a potential double county error. And, of course, they immediately corrected it. You will notice uh, there is a line at the very bottom of your income that says transfer. And right at the very top of your expenses, right above instructional, there's a transfer line there. Now, we don't use that often. I think the last time this happened was about, I think, fall of 2021. But the correction that they made was um, there was a transfer to another fund out of expense for August. And the amount was 203 some thousand dollars. And then in September, you'll notice that on the income part, it transfers in. Now, by the time you reach the end of the year, which, of course, that's what we're trying to project at any point in time, how we're going to end up, it nets out. Uh, the confusing part, or maybe I was the only one confused, but um, it does sort of distort your expenses, your bottom line. It either overstates income, expense, uh, cash net income or understates it. So we try to make comparisons, you know, what changes since our last board meeting. And that, it's always a little confusing when you got two different results, but that's why it happened. And uh, Andrea, is, is that right on the money? Pretty much? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so basically the money for the 9 one payroll came out, you know, the 31st, yeah, and so that's an adjustment we make just so you can see on cash purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the money came out, but it's not an expenditure for the first, right? So, uh, I don't, I, I'm not gonna press my luck into dwell on that topic anymore. I'm still not sure I know what the journal entries were to correct that, but at any rate, um, the first version here, uh, if we look at uh, our latest projected year in, uh, we're showing total income eleven million oh thirty seven three twenty nine, less total expense eleven million two twenty four four seventy nine, and that gives us a cash loss of one hundred eighty seven thousand one fifty. Now that would be on the first line that you come to. Now, that looks like, then, a big improvement from what we were projecting last month, which was a 331,391 loss. But the, the catch is that because of that error and the correction, uh, that's not quite, that's sort of an inaccurate figure. It's skewed a bit. So the next step is we know one thing for sure, and I, I have that right on the bottom here, I've got kind of a summary now on my pre-meeting pre report that's got all of the key metrics that you really need. The rest of it is detail if, if you're interested. Um, we know for sure on 7-1 that the beginning cash balance was 930517 
And we are projecting then that our ending cash on June 30th is going to be 539,484. So uh, that tells us that in actuality, our actual net cash loss was the second reported number, which was uh, 39, uh, 391,034 loss, which is a little bit worse. That's uh, maybe 50,000 some dollars. Uh, worse than uh, what we thought it might be uh, at last month. And of course, if you look at the budget then and compare uh, what we think the end of the year will be versus our budget, which we approved in May. Um, let's see here. Of course, um, uh, there's a big deficit in all accounts. That's just suffice it to say, no surprise there. Now, let's see. Um, and I, again, I'm Apologizing here, I'm just reading from, from this report, trying to pick out the key things that we want to talk about. Um, also, I included our year-to-date debt service coverage ratio, which the bank requires, um, 1.25 times, and uh, cumulatively it's 1.12 times. But remember, that is based on... Victor and how we'll end up. So we'll assume that we're not going to have any problem with that, but I, I do try to track that. Okay, now let's see here. Uh, pardon me while I try to read my own read my own writing here. <clears throat> okay. Now the next thing I think we want to talk about is what I call a buffer for lack of a better word. Now, uh, does this mean that there's a very good probability that we're going to end up having to take 330,000 some dollars out of our cash on hand to cover operating expenses? Not necessarily. For, and we've talked about this before, so hopefully you do recall those conversations. For example, we do know that in May, when we put the budget out, uh, we don't know for sure what coverage is going to be selected by everybody in the following year. In fact, we know some of those people may not even be with us then. So we are conservative, and we make an assumption that everybody's going to take some kind of coverage. And so what happens is that in October or November, Andrea will go through and change the budget is a little over $700,000, and she's going to change it to a little bit over $500,000. And uh, then we'll, we can track it from there. And that is, last year was about 71%. Now, if we assume that that holds true for this year, and probably will, uh, that means that we could have, and if I'm wrong on this, correct me, please. You notice I, I told her bookkeeping plus has to confirm what I'm saying here. But it would appear to me that we could knock that loss down by as much as $208,000 maybe. Now that's not guaranteeing that amount, but it would seem possible uh, to me. So that's good. And uh, also, uh, and I don't want to get in this too much because I know nothing has been announced or decided. Uh, but certainly it's something we've talked about often, uh, but if we do not hire or fill the two uh, junior ROTC positions, the SASE and the ASI position, now if, those, if the salary and total comp, Andrea, is still in our budget, which it, I'm pretty sure it is, then uh, if you check our salary schedule, which is an attachment to the May budget, which we passed, let's see, where did that number go? I think it's about 195, um, where is 195, that? Oh yes, that sounds familiar. That's the number right there. So uh, if you add just those two together, uh, it looks like we could knock the uh, cash loss down to, I think I came up with about 57,000. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll interject on that. Sure. Um, because 
one of the things not having the JROTC because of the size and the increase in high school enrollment, mm -hmm. we have to have a fifth cap instructor. Okay, um, so, so we'll pick not, up that expense. Yeah, we'll pick up that expense. We still come out ahead on that mm -hmm. financially, mm -hmm. um, but you know, obviously there there there's going to be some fluctuations. I forgot to put this in my um, report, and I think on my CEO report, I'm also going to need to put maternity leaves announced. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. because we uh, currently have three mm -hmm. uh, that we're aware of. Uh, one of them, we're not entirely sure where she, when she'll be going um, because her uh, uh, child was born early, so oh. he's still in the NICU. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And then we have one out right now, and then we have another, I believe, through December, January time period. Mm -hmm. We're getting nods from the elementary over there. Uh, oh. So uh, the AK family is growing, everybody. That tells us Yay. Yeah, um, so the sub budget's probably a little, gonna be a little wonky. Okay. Uh, to handle through that, mm -hmm. but um, you know, we do. We've had some fluctuations, kind of with the positions. Right. Um, I also, I know, Dave, you're going to bring up that Johnson Controls next month. That money will be in the debt retirement. Okay. Where it is. Actually, I had totally forgotten that. Never mind. You're it right. Your I, that was my. <laughs> that was my. Hey, was it? Okay. Proof that good. I read. Yeah, I don't read this, but yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I shouldn't kid around. I guess. But. So. And I, I think also, um, I know that we have a parent here uh, mm -hmm. probably hearing, wow, we're $300,000 in the hole already. Cool. Okay, good. Oh, okay, good. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so, I, I was, so anybody listening, I think it's important to note that that is um, part of our bleacher and our um, computer purchase where we got the loan proceeds the last day of right. last fiscal year, yes. but the expenses are here. Um, you also included in there the Serta Pro, mm -hmm. um, and that was a June expense that got filled. In okay, July. yes, they did so, the painting project. Yes, yeah. they did the gym. Right. Very appreciative of it, but mm -hmm. now it looks yeah. wonky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, uh, I, that did, uh, <laughs> I did mention that, and also, if you haven't looked at the report, I think that's added to Boyle. <coughs> you did make a correction there on something that, yeah, I hadn't really... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, so good. okay, so uh, you might want to consult that if you haven't seen that. Um, then what she's getting into. Then uh, we first take a look at what we think the end of the year will be, and that changes every month, as you see, because in reading CO report, looked like maybe fifty thousand new grant money that wasn't in the budget, and then we've got the new cap, so that changes, and that's one reason I start off the report with saying <coughs> now what's changed from last month. And usually, and then we go to the month at hand, which is August, and usually a lot of what happens in August is why we have to change those projections. So if you discount the uh, 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 distortion created by the uh, payroll thing and the corrections, not really much changed or happened during the month. Uh, let's see, let me go by memory here. Um, both months... Well, August had a, a loss. Uh, let's see if I can pick that out real quickly here. But it was budgeted, yes. Uh, for August, the uh, cash net income was a $414,000 loss. And it was budgeted at one sixty five seven zero nine. And September's, which will also have the effect of the payroll correction in that uh, income's overstated. That is uh, budgeted at a 321,558 loss. Now, um, for those that are in the audience here, don't, you know, that's not to create fear. Uh, because on the average out of 12 months, uh, there's usually only five months that we have a positive bottom line. Of course, we don't pay taxes, so it's, we say profit, but Really what it is, it's either taking in or adding to or having to subtract from our cash balance if we have to cover operating. So especially in the fall months, we usually do have a cash loss at the bottom. So that's not out of the, the ordinary. And I think it's a little enhanced again because of that payroll um, uh, glitch. But um, the expenses... Uh, and that's probably why we have that 330 
the four buffer items because, yes, you mentioned there were several accounts. Security, for example, uh, we had the security outside services, about 26,000 uh, that was uh, not budgeted. Uh, the biggest one was the painting expense. Yeah, and that, um, that security is what I'm talking about for the halo. So it'll the go, halo, okay, yeah, yes. Go debt retirement. Okay. Uh, let's see, outside uh, cleaners was a little bit higher, maybe 20, 22. Um, what else? Let's see, in house uh, maintenance and janitorial was about 17 higher. So uh, there, the expenses were a little bit higher than budget in those months. Um, and then, of course, building improvements and building improvements for the bleachers. That is always guaranteed to confuse budget analysis because most of what is under building improvements is uh, uh, we will be reimbursed for that from the COVID program or the innovation grant. Yeah. And uh, the bleachers, uh, that is our money, uh, but we did borrow it from the bank and then we'll, we'll pay it back, which if we had not done that, uh, that would have taken a big hit on our bottom line, our cash balance. So um, that's really about all I think you can say about uh, August and what's coming for September and where we stand for the end of the year. I think we uh, may have to struggle to break even, but I think we can break even on a cash basis or maybe better. Yeah, and, you know, obviously given the difference with the loan proceeds and those expenses, that's going to be a little harder to balance out. Um, but, you know, looking at like building improvement, custodial, a lot of that is summer projects mm -hmm. and some things that were supposed to finish in June, be part of that year, ended up in July or September, depending on what it is. Um, we've had some interesting things. This building has been fighting back. Uh, it does not like getting improvements. <laughs> they tried to flood our boiler room again, so that was real fun. Oh, we got through it. Um, you know, we'll, a lot of the things you'll see kind of like the supply spending and everything, once we get through that July, August, and September period, that goes way down until again, you know, in January to start the new semester. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said, you know, the, our sub budgets right now are not where they are supposed to be. But working through that, because we've had some challenges. We've had a few people sick, um, some kind of serious issues that thankfully are being worked out or figuring out the root cause of. Um, but you know, it's just the start of the school year. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, Andrea, did uh, anything you want to add or correct? Are we pretty much right on the money here? That going to look good. I think you did a good job. <laughs> or anyone else. Feel, you know, I don't try. I just try to cover our key topics. And, uh, um, you know, again, the monthly, because we're so heavily reimbursed, monthly analysis is just up and down. And so, for the end of the year. So uh, I think that um, when, we, uh, when we pass the budget, we insist that the budget is We just have to see. So that's all I got. If I do okay, Kim. I'll try to not forget my script next week. That probably won't help. I read everything before I came. Okay. All right. We should close early. Please don't. It's been a long day. Yeah. You don't say. All right. Thank you, Dave, as always, for that. I appreciate that. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the uh, board uh, treasurer's report for this evening? I'll move that we uh, approve the treasurer's report and present. Thank you. I'll second it. Uh, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next thing, if I get approval of the August 2023 financials that were presented. I'll uh, make the motion to accept the uh, August uh, 2023 financials. Motion, and, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Dave, as always. And thank you, Andrea, 
also for all your work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Try not to have any errors uh, next month. That, uh, that's real, Absolutely. that really strains the scope of my accounting expertise trying to figure those out. So. We're going to knock it out. We're good. We're, we're good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, next thing on the agenda here under new business is our APA spotlight for APA Elementary. All right, and we have our team up. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Feel free to come on. Oops. Oops. Oh, Let's go practice for next week. <laughs> Good evening, Shut mine off here. These three? At least those three will be all together. Let's see if I can get some pictures of your mic up here. Yeah. 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 Yeah
enterprise and that drill and kill performance. So learning our math facts that way. And we're just really looking into our school wide spiral. Star tutoring. Another hat that I wear um, is uh, it's a countywide initiative that was um, birthed out of the 1008 grants uh, for learning loss because of the pandemic. Um, it is continuing on this year. So we have 92 cadets K through five enrolled, and they stay after school three days a week: Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. It's around 25 weeks. Um, they're getting snacks. It's a safe place. They're getting um, SEL time. They're getting ELA time. They're getting math time. Um, STEM activities, so it's really fun, kind of like after school daycare, um, but there is a learning component and just a more structure, and we know that our kids need that. Um, and STAR tutoring is super impactful because last year alone, 50% of our cadets who did STAR tutoring last year were able to avoid summer school and retention. So there is a significant impact with STAR, so we are glad that the program continued on for an additional year. Um, so, obviously, Michael Stanton here, um, kind of just as new assistant principal role. This is something that we've not had at the elementary, and as you all are um, aware, the long-term goal is that eventually Michael would take over as the elementary principal at uh, that like a three to five range, and then I would be going to our 25th Street campus, um, and our, which would be our early childhood um, education center, and so that would be the ultimate goal. However, I will be just very honest in saying that Michael and I balance each other really well. Um, his strengths um, are the opposite of mine and, and, and vice versa. And so together we feel like we're a pretty rounded, unique unit as far as having some good gifts that work well and balance each other. Um, the, he does not have a typical assistant principal role in the way that we haven't delegated or dedicated certain pieces of the job because he needs to be able to do all parts of the job um, once he does take over as principal. Um, so, you know, the, I don't have to read all the areas up here, but those are examples of probably we're missing a few things, but the overall um, scope of the job and what it entails. Um, but I think it's important to kind of look at the goals of, of the role. Um, working for Michael to develop a strong understanding of the holistic needs of K-5 students, and he's really made great progress with that already in a short amount of time. Uh, to have a broad understanding of elementary curriculum development as well as age and uh, grade appropriate behavioral expectations. Again, he's made great growth in that area. And then our hope is, I'm not sure if it's realistic at this point, but that he would start focusing um, his attention more on grades three through five programming uh, second semester and I would be focusing my areas on that K2, uh, K2 piece. However, we'll see how we, how, how we move in that direction. And then obviously, as I said earlier, my, the long-term goal would be that I would be working toward reopening 25th Street as our early childhood center. All right, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about MTSS. So MTSS stands for Multi-Tiered Systems of Support. Um, we will be starting this at the elementary next week. We did it a few years ago, and last year was kind of a bust since COVID. Things have been a little bit crazy, and it's taken over again now. So um, our elementary teachers will be providing different interventions, additional interventions to kids who have behavioral and academic concerns. And then they will be progress monitoring weekly for four to six weeks. And then after that, if there is no progress, then they will send them to the NTSS team and we will think about either further inventions or possible evaluation. I Excel snapshot data, so this was our baseline data for this year for K-5. through five. We are seeing consistent analysis among multiple different testing strands, I Excel and WEA. Um, so this is just kind of where they're starting at with math and ELA. Um, uh, the scores correspond to their grade level, so like first grade is the 1.0, second grade 2.0, and you go on up as you go higher, fifth grade 5.0.
Um, we have work to do, and that's where start tutoring and stuff, but this is not just an APA thing, it's across the board in education that we have work to do, especially those upper elementary are our COVID babies. So, so they that have, is yeah, interpreted that fifth grade in math is functioning at what the experts would think is the third grade? Yes, for the beginning of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically the 3.22 would be third grade two months in. So yeah. we'd really like to see that more at night, 4.75, 5.2 yeah. I think it's positive to look at that kindergarten, first grade, yeah. second grade piece yes. Yes. as we are getting yeah. way yeah. closer yeah. to being back where we need to be. Yeah. So. yeah, and you know, commenting on that, right, we, we did start those early approaches yeah. last year with like Padre and things that we were all going, did yeah. this help? Um, I also think the jump start that yeah. your team put together. Uh, I had the opportunity to go observe one of our third grade classes, or our kindergarten classes, sorry, it's the third week of school, um, doing reading lessons in our rotations, and they were acting like they had been in school for five years. Um, they were able to follow the rotations, they were able to work independently and engage with each other um, in an incredible way. So, good job to your yeah, team and the Jump Start, but also yeah. to the elementary. Um, as you said, the, the COVID babies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's across um, the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so continue on with that. So we just don't take that test one time and put it on the shelf and don't refer to it again. So we'll consistently get benchmarks. So we call them IXL snapshot period. So we'll do it four more times this year. That'll help us measure growth and be able to drive instructions, be able to identify rotations, what students need what supports. Um, just with the first baseline, our focus area is determined by IXL geometry um, across the board for K-5. Uh, for math and for ELA is the grammar um, and mechanics and reading strategy. So we'll be supporting our teachers with that as well. Speaking of the summer jumpstart program, so yeah, so this was this was new to me. I don't know if we've done the jumpstart program before until this year. So we had 30 kindergarten cadets participated. Um, they came two weeks before the first um, week of school and they learned their classroom procedures, their like drop off pickup routines, how to navigate the lunchroom. And I was there for a couple of days of it. I read to the kindergartners, so that was my first experience interacting with our elementary age cadets. And it was super fun, super cool. I think the environment in general was less overwhelming because most of the building was still empty. So we brought in these new kids, never been in structured school before. And I think overall, the, the kindergarten team mm -hmm. really thought I was impact. Mm -hmm. Had a super big impact where they didn't take that first two weeks of school with the study routines, they just re-emphasized them so they could get right into the academic work. I have 50 percent participation is unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It was mm -hmm. a high percentage. It, and again, first year of it, it was incredible. And it's, yeah. it's part of the, you know, whatever it takes, we'll throw it out. Yeah. So. In addition to that, um, during that same period, we had 10 third graders participate in their two-week pirate STEM camp where they worked on key skills and extra practice because we know third grade is a big testing year. So mm -hmm as many as we could get in, let's start working now. And in a fun way too, we're not just sitting there lecturing them and doing worksheets, it's a STEM hands-on activity, so it's fun. Um, the elementary hub, uh, Michael doesn't really like to get public recognition, but um, I'm gonna do it anyway. Something that he's already helped tremendously with at the elementary is helping create a unified one-stop place for technical type of items related back to the elementary. Uh, documentations on one spot, certain forms, uh, request pieces, um, and it, for me personally, it's already been very impactful that I don't have to go digging through an email to try to find something that I can go right to this hub and um, be able to find what I need. And I think for the staff in general, the more we're using it, the more they're gonna feel that it was a super beneficial thing. So I do wanna definitely give kudos to Michael for that because that's been a huge um, thing to help with our processes in general. Yeah, it's just a living document, it's a living website, just a Google website, and it's just all linked there because I spent so much time digging through thousands of emails yes. to find resources or teachers like, can you resend me this calendar or this work order form? It's like, okay, let's, how do I get the staff to take ownership of what they're needing? So we put it on a website, hi, have you referred to the elementary hub? And that just saves everyone time, it's efficient, there's a search bar, you find it, and if it's not on there, let me know and I'll add it back. Like Marissa just told me something today that we we're gonna add to it. Yes. 
Uh, PBL, Project Based Learning, it's a district-wide initiative that I'm overseeing at the elementary. So teachers at the elementary level are all implementing two PBL units a semester, so I'm working through that process. Again, PBL is just another fun way to engage students in a different type of learning. Um, PBL was challenging for me in the classroom, so I think coming down to the elementary, someone who's actually lived through the PBL process, that provides a different lens for the teachers and how we can work through this together um, and tap into our weaknesses and push ourselves to new different types of learning. Um, some PBL units that we're seeing this year are careers at the kindergarten level, talking about what we can do when we grow up so we can stay motivated in school, talk about healthy foods, because we know the west side of Anderson is a food desert, and playground needs because um, we know that our kids need entertainment or they get into a little mischief. So how can we look at our playground and see what other um, equipment or games and stuff like that we can provide to the um, playground as well. And with this uh, comes a bunch of field trips. So I'm helping with the field trip process, getting kids out into the community and things like that. Uh, some calendar of events, um, just things looking forward. Um, obviously, this week's homecoming week, so the elementary is participating in some dress down days, and we'll see. You know, maybe a couple cadets will be around for other games and things this week, right? Do we have one Thursday? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. yes. homecoming on Thursday, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, October 2nd, picture day, so that's coming up soon. Uh, the Hispanic Heritage Convo that is a, a big <coughs> piece that we uh, tried to work toward uh, doing better, being more inclusive when it comes to celebrating the month of Hispanic Heritage Pieces, which is September 15th through October 15th. And so on October 6th, we have some of our uh, cadets over here from this building that will come over and uh, put on a little uh, uh, combo, uh, doing some dance, dancing, some showing some pieces of Hispanic heritage. And so we're really excited about that. We also have been uh, doing the pledge in Spanish, um, trying to do that daily, as well as uh, celebrating uh, Hispanic heritage throughout the building through visuals and through art projects and through, through lessons. And so we do feel like that we're doing better than we've done on that in the past, so I think that's a, that's a good piece there. October 20th, we have our annual Trunk or Tree, which is a really pretty fun time for families, kids, um, not so much the staff, but we love to show up. We love to show up and, 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 and help. Um, it serves as a twofold. It's a fun uh, piece for uh, the families to come in. They, there's no charge to come in and do the trunk or treating or the trick or treating, but um, we do then provide uh, opportunities for them to purchase some snacks and some things like that. And we're able to build up a little uh, bit of cushion of money usually from the trunk or treat. Um, October 26th, 27th, we have family teacher conferences, which we know that's a big new piece for us this year, um, and we're going to be able to uh, have a better approach at communication with families in a more process-oriented way. And so we're, I think, in general, excited about that. Um, talking about how at least one of those nights we will have an extended day where staff would come in a little later and then stay through the evening so the parents who are and guardians who are working later would be able to come to come in. Um, we have our winter concert, which will be our music and art piece that will be December 1st, and then we have an EL, which is our English language piece, uh, family engagement night in December as well. Is that it? Different campus for that. Uh, I think so. I don't know. Maybe she has a different plan. I think the piece in Canvas is spring, and maybe she's doing something different. And, uh, I think it's We're going to start more planning okay. after. Okay. <laughs> All right, so do you all have any comments or questions or anything else you need to know? I have one. Uh, uh, there's a lot of information. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate that, a lot of data, and I'm, I love numbers. Um, I don't know if it was the STAR program or the IXL, the test that you give the kids. Is it the IXL? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, third bet Between third and fifth, third grade is where start, they're starting to give the actual uh, baseline, the standardized testing. testing. Yeah. Is there because it's being seen across the nation. They're saying it at least 10 years to get everyone back to normal um, academically. If we see a, uh, a continuous score, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If they're constantly below the bar where they need to be, what's, do we have a plan in place? I mean, obviously at that point, by the third testing, 40 in, out of four, and that would be where we include some of those pieces like the star tutoring that we do have access to that um, MTSS process which would be putting cadets through um, intensive 
that we're looking at it together to decide some interventions, um, providing additional small group instruction. For example, right now we have some teachers who are doing a little bit of swapping through different subjects. So if, if a student's struggling in a certain area, going to a different classroom to try it a different way or to um, you know learn a, a different style, and and vice versa with our our higher achieving or high ability cadets as well, giving those opportunities to go into other classrooms to be pushed. In general, Michael and I have talked about the calendar for next year and thinking about our, our schedule for the next year, thinking about how we could create an environment with a, which would allow for more transition in as far as putting groups of cadets in skill level uh, strands so that we can focus on specific skills and deficiencies. Um, but to be honest with you, I mean, we don't have a magic plan or a magic, you know, I, I, we don't know the magic key. Yeah. I mean, but we are constantly trying to re-innovate and, yeah. and, and push some new ideas. We have a Title I interventionist, and that's all data-driven, yeah. and they're working with our third and fourth graders, um, reading interventions, testing interventions for the big third yes. grade tests, because our I think our goal this year is 70, 80% pass rate. So we're working towards that 80% proficiency on the I-read test. So we have things in place. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's been a two year assessment of where we're at, right? Um, you know, they're they're predicting ten years till we get to quote unquote normal, but it might as well call it a hundred. Um, what our state has done over the last three years with the pandemic and what they have done over the last twelve years is they keep changing our standards or as what we experienced this summer, they stripped about sixty seven percent of them away. Um, and they're supposed to focus on the actual skills they really need to know, but these are very vague standards and they're not making any uniform attempt um, with this, although now they are kind of pushing a uniform curriculum or um, some of those things. I'll soapbox on that later. Um, but we have been very proactive in this approach over the last two years, making sure that our curriculum is aligning K through 12, our programming is that we're using the same language. We are, that's part of the high school math department going down there, right? Um, because the pandemic, as well as all of these standards and curriculum changes over the last 12 years, have manufactured a lot of deficiencies. And so taking high school teachers down to see how an elementary um, teacher introduces variables and algebra concepts, um, you know, when it's two elephants plus three apples equals question mark, that's algebra. Um, we just don't see it that way once we're up there. So I think a lot of the interventions we have in place, uh, opting in early to the early literacy, um, the science of reading, that's really given us a way to, one, get access to uh, free resources, um, as well as coaching with that as well. And so having the Star Tutoring Program, um, that is basically, I think it's one to four this year, right? Yes. Um, one to four ratio between adult and kiddos, and they stay with that same adult um, for their three days. And so they're really getting that hands-on approach, um, really big intervention there. We've also added um, a Reading Horizons, which is another science and reading-based intervention program. Um, we're really working on the ELL population with um, that programming because we know that there are already some language challenges, right? When you speak one language at home and you're learning one at school, that makes it hard. And so, you know, I think this team has done a really great job of finding what we need, but, you know, a lot of it, if, if we find the magic answer, we're all gonna be billionaires. Uh, we don't have to worry about that school funding anymore. But I, the plans that we have put in place and have implemented with Fidelity, I think, you know, we're seeing some results out of that. So it's very encouraging. <coughs> third, fourth, fifth, we're seeing the same. You'll yeah. see a similar d dynamic with sixth, seventh, and eighth, um, all the way up to 10th grade. The 10th graders are the first generation where the standards happen. So in kindergarten, they had core, Common Core, the National Common Core. First grade, they had Common Core. Second grade, they had Common Core. And then third grade, we switched to our own Indiana standards and just started expecting them to have already had those standards again. And so we're seeing that in 10th grade, a huge deficiency that you can attempt to help, right? You can teach them how to adapt or navigate through it, but there are foundational gaps that you can't go back and do. Um, and so they're doing a great job of getting that early now. Um, another thing that we also opted in, I didn't highlight this, 
um, is the early exit <coughs> test. So we currently have seven kiddos as second graders. They pass the third grade I read, which means that's off their plate. Um, the most torturous grade level we have for testing, especially if you're an English language learner, is third grade because they get all of our internal assessments, which we triangulate all the data to get as deep of a picture as we can. But like I said, if we don't put it on the shelf, we lose it. But they also get WIDA testing to check their language proficiency. They, they get the iRead, they get the iLearn, and you know, our NWA and all the formative assessments. And you know, if they need to go back for a dyslexia screener, which we do have a dyslexia specialist, then we got to do more interventions there. They test more than they get to do anything. Um, so. Anyway, I, think, yeah. I said I wasn't going to soapbox, oh, and I just good. jump right on. I think time is good too. So it's like um, society wants instant results, and mm -hmm. we're not going to solve this problem overnight. So the curriculum that we have, giving it the time, you know how many emails I get, and I'm sure everybody here gets about these latest and new oh, curriculum yes. to solve it. But it's like I commend the school, like I've used IXL since my first year here, and this is year five. So we're giving these programs time to work. Well, and I get it. The Department of Education has constantly, over the years, moved your goalpost. You know, yes, per se. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but I do want to commend yeah, all, yeah, yeah. all of you as far as like yeah. the fact that you're being proactive. And I love the fact that you said it. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is you two, are, yes, are a great team. But the fact that everyone's being proactive rather than reactive. Because too many times in education, we react to something. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah, and I think, and you know, being a leader in these school, right? Like I think that you know, we've done it with quite fidelity the last couple of years. There's been pandemic. That's really changed our perspective, but also the way that our model is designed, it's individualized education. Um, because one size is not going to fit all, and it certainly, as the state moves to that, is not going to have the impact uh, unless you do it right. So I commend you guys. Doing those snapshots regularly will yeah. obviously help the schools to maneuver and figure out where the hell needs to be and we how our own, to adjust. Yeah, we have our own data that coach. That is just great. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So you can adjust and yes. Well, and as the data comes together, and we're starting to see that it's aligned, right? You know, NWA is reflecting the same thing as our internal assessments or in class, the rules wherever we're at with all that fun stuff. Um, that's giving us a robust picture and also telling us what we're using is actually aligned. Um, and in education, especially over the last five years, it's been a lot of spaghetti theory. Um, and vendors literally are calling, emailing, stopping by. Never had curriculum people literally stopping by like every week to come see me about this new program to sell. You're really just repackaging the same stuff. The research that they're using for, to defend the science of reading is from 2000. They had the answer then. They've switched back and forth between phonics and sight words and all that, and it's had an impact. So. But our, our elementary teachers really have been amazing, but also the SEL component, right? That kids are not test scores. Um, the test scores help us maybe get some insight on how we can better help those kiddos, um, but they also make sure that they are loved, they have a safe place to be, um, that they are learning to be good and kind humans, um, and to celebrate differences. Um, I would encourage the board, if you guys get time, walk around our elementary. It is one of the coolest decorated places, but it's just a happy environment. Um, it is very much life-giving for me to go over there when I get the chance um, and see the kiddos in action and see them with their bubbles in the hallway. I'm like, man, I wish we could teach high school to go back to bubbles in the hallway. Um, yeah, come on guys, do that. Um, but you know, I, and again, I don't, neither of you, like, um, public praise, but I think you know Adam's leadership over the last several years and really focusing on what's best for kids and what's going to help them. Right? If we're just shoving academic interventions down their throat and not hugging them or not giving them the support services they need um, to be successful and for their families to be successful, we would not make any impact. Right? It would just keep the cycle continuing. So. Again, sorry, public praise, but okay. thank you. Any I'm other questions? We know about the in reading, you know, sight uh, versus the phonetics. What about math? I remember when I was in junior high, the new math came out. And of course, the, the old folks 
joked about, well, I couldn't figure out the old math level on the new. Is there anything new in math theory like there is in the you know, phonics versus sight? That's tough number theory. <laughs> That's the class I'm in right now. Uh, um, okay. I may be sorry I asked that. I don't know. But. No, like, it's all about application now. So I was trained from a theoretical lens. Here, just dump all this information and you'll be a human calculator. Don't ever apply it to the real world. Mm. But education now, they, especially Indiana, is uh, becoming more CTE, a career technical education driven. They're wanting you to be able to apply the math, which I think is what's been missing. And that was not a strength of mine. Mm -hmm. So like our high school, the other colleagues here have a more application-based mindset. So how can we, like, oh, we're going to learn this. I'm going to apply it to this field. And like, oh, we can kick footballs and study the arch, and that's more of a high school topic, but there's an idea there because a lot of our kids like sports, so how do we do that? Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the approach at the elementary level. Like, I'm looking up um, conferences and webinars so I can learn elementary math because at the end of the day, I wasn't trained in elementary-based mathematics. Now, math is math, but sometimes some of the elementary math is some of the hardest math I've ever seen because <laughs> it's so simple and trivial for me now that I don't even know how to break it down and teach it, like watching I saw them doing greater than and less than in the first grade classroom and like little alligators and you see yeah, the kids yeah, doing yeah, it yeah. and all that fun stuff. So they're playing the baby shark songs and all that fun stuff. Um, that's all different, but that's how you get the kids engaged in those processes. Well, I think you're right. I, I know as I look back, uh, I, I think most of my, my classmates, classmates and myself did, did very well with the, with the uh, Basic arithmetic function story problems are always a challenge for all of us. Yeah. To and that has a tie to reading. But mm -hmm. when they get into algebra, mm -hmm. now the new math was trying to take some of the uh, uh, algebra concepts and introduce it at a younger age. Uh, but the problem there was that you're dealing with something abstract. What is what's an x equals? Well, what's an x? And I think that's where we lose the kids. So uh, anything that I think if you can, um, if they can apply it to something, anything, I mean, there's all kinds of examples and say now, you know, here's, here's the formula, uh, two plus X equals in the textbook. Okay, take a real world example. Mm -hmm. uh, I always said that in a factory, if we can have all of the kids come in and learn how to take a QC quality control measurements using all of those the devices and everything, that would be a great way to teach fractions and decimals and all of that. So um, I, I don't know. but uh, And there's like other challenges not, not related to math. Uh, sorry, I'm taking too much time. Like um, something I that I didn't realize until Michael. I came down to the elementary was like, the high school level kids just know how to use a computer right but all of our elementary kids are growing up with the iPhones and the Android mm -hmm. to their touch so they come in and get this thing they don't know how to type or what a number pad is and they're like beating their computers to death mm -hmm. and that was, it was a new experience they still learn though how to add do the basic arithmetic without mm -hmm. a computer or a, a yeah, you know, that's their the software they're using to practice their math oh, okay. and stuff like yep. that but to see them but the barrier now is how do they use the machine like okay they can tell me three plus five is eight but it's not touch screen, so now we got to learn. And those are things that I never even thought about until I came down and lived it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, and that's that's some of the challenge that they figured out with I learned. I was gonna say learn because I learned, but that sounds interesting. Um, a lot of the issues when they switched to completely digital um, tests is that kids didn't know how to manipulate the tools. They would put number pads on there, but mm -hmm. they look like calculators, but they're not calculators. Or you'd have to, you know, drop and drag. Well, if you have kids that do not have that dexterity, they can't do the problem, even though they could tell you two plus two comes over here and it's four. And so that is one of the biggest challenges. You know, we've had computers at our elementary since inception, um, and you know, elementary, especially early elementary, they like to say uh, DAP a lot. Um, looking at developmentally appropriate skill development, right? Because kids should still learn how to play. They need to socialize. They need to get their mm -hmm. hands messy. They need to draw with shading cream. They need to trade, um, you know, numbers and apples and things like that to learn that concept. But we also know this is waiting for them. And even if they're the absolute most brilliant child ever, the way that our state and federal government define if they're successful is can they manipulate this thing 
to demonstrate that. No. So that's, but on the flip side, they're saying, hey, we want them to have career-based skills and technology mm -hmm. now. We want them to learn STEM. We want to use your maker spaces, right? We're ahead of the curve on that as well. But at the same point, it all is going to come back to, can you push the button? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's really hard. Yeah. And then when you have kids that have not had developmental exposure to daycare, preschool, pre-K, even you know socializing, being able to run through parks and things with other kids, we got a lot of developmental things to fix to the point that the CDC actually moved the time limit. So kids are expected to talk and walk at a later age now than you know, all the previous things, which again, they moved our goalpost, but I think they took us to hockey or something on this one. I think I'm suddenly glad I'm not in school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. you know what? But again, I have a major applause to the elementary because they do it every day. This is With smiles yes. oh, and happiness. Well, thank you. 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 Thank you.
besides prevention um, and identifying potential you know, mental health challenges or things like that is buying yourself some time. And so that is a lot of the parts that we'll be doing. Um, I, I mentioned in my theater report about the visitor management software mm -hmm. that we will also be getting, um, which is incredible for us. Um, all visitors will have to present their card, uh, their license or identification card issued by the state. It scans that cool barcode on the back of it and it's gonna tell us who's got warrants out. It's gonna tell us if they're a violent offender or a sex offender and give us the capability to not let them pass it's our doors. It's scan card access points then, isn't it? No, so no, the, the scan different. card, yeah, those okay. are just our swipe card ports so that we can better secure some of our areas but also give access to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, looking at like our gymnasium, we now have locking doors in there, which was part of the safety part because that is a large uh, congregate setting. Mm -hmm. And so now it's locked at all times, but if you're supposed to be getting in and trying to get in and you don't have the key to get in, you can't. And so now having the scan card access and some of those points will let the right people in and keep the wrong people out. Um, but the, the visitor management, they're not getting past those great, or those great doors. And if they don't have an ID, they don't, it's not gonna let them. So um, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. It takes a, hey, you're my best friend. Well, we may be you know, best friends and I may not know that you've got you know, a really long route sheet and should not be around a school environment. Um, Obviously, we will do whatever we can to support families, meet them where they are, and be able to engage in that way. But our number one priority is keeping these kiddos safe. Um, so very excited about that. Um, basically, what we need to do is look at the month of November. I was hoping probably before the board meeting that we could um, have an executive session or have a separate executive session maybe the Thursday after. Um, so that we can present, the safety team can present a full uh, safety plan to the board. Um, it does need to be obviously an executive um, because it's not a public disclosure. Um, that oh, way. okay. So you're not saying executive committee, no, just an executive yeah. with the whole board. Yeah. yeah. And our, our full safety team will be there to present. Um, but uh, you don't give the other guys the playbook. Well, that's right. So, um, putting the bad guys. Yeah, place. putting the bad guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's always great when the other team says, here's our place, and you can <laughs> anticipate that. You know, when you're playing basketball and everything, we don't want to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I feel, I've been very proud today. I'm very proud of the elementary, but I'm very proud of our safety team, too, um, because the commitment to it, live, eat, breathe. This, these are people that are willing to do whatever it takes to protect I think kids. it's been a long time, and I don't think anybody here other than myself was on the board the last time we really had a detailed discussion of our security. Yeah, it's... So it might be good for an update. I think Green, Dr. Greenwood was still with us uh, I, But that was I when we began the program. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when we began. That was kind of, I think, my first or second here we had that come in. Um, we've had a couple updates, uh, but yes, not at a full board. Um, so I think that will be helpful as well. Um, but yeah, learning what the new regulations are and the things that they require, if they can enforce it and they can help fund it, um, they will save a lot of lives. Um, and making it that there has to be collaboration between law enforcement and the schools. That is something we have always done. Um, but it is very encouraging for me, just you know, as an educator, mom, human being, to know that this is being pushed and required at every school. Even part of the requirements, um, one of the things that they are doing are AEDs, right? Um, that's another thing, APA, we have AEDs. Um, you're supposed to have it within a place three minutes you know, from where a thing is. And we're covered even in this big building. Um, we're covered at the elementary, but I want 10 more um, because we want to have them on our buses. We want to have them where we can take them back and forth. And if we take an AED out to the soccer field, but we've got a volleyball game, we're not removing another one from inside. Um, and so they are helping with that. They're helping with funding on some of those initiatives. Um, 
So it's very encouraging, but um, basically I just wanted to get on get on your schedule. Thank you. Is this something that uh, you would like for us to submit tonight, or do we need to look at the entire safety plan schedule as well, or two, or some recommendations that you, you would suggest to us? Um, I really think we should do it in November. I would okay. say around the board meeting. Um, okay. If we want to do it that same day, it's fine. Um, you know, our safety team members will be there when they you know, need to be. And we want to make sure that we have enough time for them to yeah, no, interact. Yeah. I would be afraid that if we do it the same night as the board meeting, that there won't be enough time. Right. Yeah. I don't want to. Or we'll be here until 11 o'clock at night. Right. <laughs> <It's fair point. laughs> we have a yeah, lot of I mean, elements to talk about. Yeah, so I think yeah. it definitely needs to be on, on a separate, yeah. on a separate <laughs> whether we do it that same week or even the week before. All right, find a date. Because yeah. that's, 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 we're not coming the week before, right? That's, 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 that's Thanksgiving. Well, we just we have a Thanksgiving dinner here. I'll call about that. They're a little better at it than me. Um, would that be something maybe either November 30th or maybe a Tuesday of December 5th? Awesome. So now you're talking after the board meeting in November? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't really matter um, like what day it is, right? We have our safety plan, we have our procedures. Um, the new things that we are implementing are not anything that really needs board approval, anything like that. Um, but I just want to make sure you guys get the full, robust idea of what's going on. Um, yeah. In case parents or a community members, hey, do you guys do this? The answer is probably yes, or five times more. Um, the Halo devices um, are things that a lot of people haven't even heard of yet. So it's been kind of interesting when I say, oh, I can do this, 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 and then I can demonstrate it. Like, ours isn't fully, you know, it's functioning, right? But we're still working on getting the alerts and there's some software and stuff. Um, but already it's making things easier That's to great. proactively address some issues. So that, that system is a great, great asset for the school. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's the schedule. Um, how, long roughly would it, how long roughly would that plan be? Are they needing a couple hours schedule? Oh, no, are we going to be like walking through the school yeah. or we're going to be like no, we talking, be in, a be in a meeting, yeah. talking about it? Okay. Yeah, we could probably show you like a couple things, but then that it's really just presentation. Um, I would say, given probably questions and things like that, we should probably do about an hour and a half or two just to be safe. We don't have to take all that time, of course, but that it's way like you, two hours. Yeah, you can get a robust. As far as my schedule, you tell me about it, I'll make sure I'm there. Okay. Yeah. So, same. same. Let me do something. This is going to be even a little, probably more tricky. <laughs> yeah. A little bit more thoughtful. I'm going to look at our athletic schedule. Because yeah, yeah. I know Elisa would like to be at some of her kids. Well, that's still just at the beginning of basketball right. season, so yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she does understand that if I'm not, if I'm here versus that in event, then she knows it's still for the good of her. Right. She's pretty cool, kid. Yeah, kind of like her. Yeah, she's alright. It's alright. Yeah. Um. With that being said, then, I think uh, December 5th would be better. Um, there's not a girls' game room check. Oh boy. No, we think you'd talk at 6 o'clock and probably start at 6. I think that works better for your work schedules, right? Or I'm here all day, everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm good with what happened. As long as I know that was well enough. Yeah. What day of the week is the fifth? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. And the boys are not, they don't have a game, they just have practice. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a game. 6 p.m. Now, will, will we be here in the cafeteria? Or will Here's fine. Here's fine. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's nothing that's going to require to go out to an open forum for board approval. So um, that could just be done on the consent item in January. So we're looking at December 5th? So looking so at December 5th for the uh, safety plan review and meeting here in the boardroom at 6 p.m. Uh, start time. All right. And sending out that 
put that down. Thank you. All right, next thing on the uh, agenda here is the uh, facility projects planning. Um, looks like there was a board member that requested this, so we'll go into discussion for that. Who requested that? I believe you did, sir. And it's yes. on a recording, so you're going to have to just claim that. Oh, I like how the, the, the name was changed to. Yeah. I like it. I'm a teacher. I like it. Rhetoric, right? I um, will yes. congratulate. I think George initiated this. I will say that this is one thing, maybe just me, although I think some other people. Uh, have always thought it would be a good idea uh, for us to have, uh, let's say, a list of all the potential CapEx type projects. So uh, we can use that for long range planning, which we haven't done in a while. Of course, COVID kind of did the, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, I think, this, uh, uh, from what I have seen of it here, uh, appears to already be a working document that we're using. I even saw a couple items that were done, complete, on the budget, and et cetera. So uh, I congratulate you for initiating uh, the assembling of this. I think that is something that will be very useful. So, uh, so Joe, one of the things that was top of my list, I think I've asked about before, was uh, the campus resource officer. Was that one of the part of the legislation that changed is adding two now? Because originally you only had one. Uh, no, that's just what we want. We have an SRO um, who is armed uh, here at 29th Street, and he also is a teacher. So, you know, it would be nice to be able to have a full time SRO, um, but as everything else going on, there is a shortage. Um, a lot of schools are having a hard time finding them um, and the pay that schools are able to offer versus what now police departments are offering because they have a shortage of finding law enforcement officers. It's one of those things where this is kind of on that wish list part, right, which I know is kind of a sticky terminology there, but, you know, really to look at being able to fully fund just one full-time SRO we're probably looking at a hundred thousand. Um, you know, obviously that's going to include um, benefits. It's going to include you know some of the ammunition, those type of things. Um, but that's a really hard amount of money to get, especially school safety grant can now pay for it, but you can't count on it for sustainability. And for a school like us, a hundred thousand dollars the max that we can ask for. Um, so trying to find a good solution to that. That's part of why we have so many um, school safety specialists at each campus because, um, you know, obviously they do not have police powers, but they are receiving training and those things. We also have critical response teams that can activate at each campus, but it's not the same as having someone with police powers right there. Um, Nate has been our longtime SRO for quite a while. Um, he's really great, works really well with the kids um, in the classroom, very good at developing those relationships. Um, we also are really starting to get a better relationship with APD. Um, the fire department too, they were here last week to just kind of walk through, do a safety check to see you know, if they had to respond, how would they respond, um, which is part of that whole new initiative at the state level. Um, because the fire department and the police department have to interact with every school in their district. Um, we have been pushing um, over the last 18 months with APD about community policing, right? Building those positive relationships. We know that that's not always, you know, right there, right? Out in the news, it happens. And so getting our kids to become more familiar with that these are the good guys, they're here to protect us, um, they're here to help us. Um, it's great, but you know, like you said, top of my wish list item is getting the full SROs um, and being able to sustain that. Um, just it gives everyone a better peace of mind. Um, even having them available at arrival and dismissal, the most vulnerable points 
of any school day is arrival and dismissal. That's where more people are coming in and out. There's more access to the building. Um, we are very restrictive with our access, but there are still people that come, you know, in as kids are going out because they're, well, I just need to grab my sister and then we exit the building immediately. Um, but that's hard because there's so many doors in this building, right? They're all locked, but kids are going out that way. Um, that's why, you know, for our arrival and dismissal, we try to funnel into certain areas and we do the staging. Um, but again, having an SRO, someone that can respond if there were any issues, makes it better. So. And the kids don't ask. If the kids are standing at the door, uh, any adult, An adult they're going to just, yeah, they're they just they're like in. Yeah, often. You know, and they're ignoring my science. It's part of our reading initiative. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they were still I can speak, but my older son was assaulted by an adult last year in the school because of that statement. Yeah. Oh. And that's something that we can't. Yeah, it's after school. Like, yeah, that was that was during an extracurricular activity. Um, it was a very unacceptable situation. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's un it should be an avoidable situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, however, our kids, we have, we're really pushing them, right? It's hard for a kid to really imagine that person coming through the door. No, that's just so-and-so's mom or dad or brother, right? Um, even if it's for us as staff members, where they try to, they see us trying to walk in, we're like, do not open that door for us. You have no clue if I, you know, don't work here anymore. Yeah. Or and that's I exactly have what I said. Day. You don't know that mm -hmm. I didn't just get fired now. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we put in this building signs on every single door. Do not prop this door open. Do not let anybody in. Um, we did have APA get a little mad at us um, in I think early August because an APA officer came to the door to come visit us uh, for something and asked the kid to let him in. The kid pointed at the sign on the door and said, that way. <laughs> <laughs> this officer, he goes, can you believe it? I'm in uniform. I'm like, that anybody could buy yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. How are they going to know that whether you're a real officer? I, I get you're carrying yourself like one, but there's plenty of people that yeah, could be yeah. passed that way. You so our you. kid did exactly what they were supposed yeah. to, and mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you thought it was disrespectful. They didn't say anything. They just... Mm -hmm. We're okay with our strike guards come through because I know I I read that sign was first posted and I followed some guy all the way around to the front because I thought mm -hmm. oh, I if good. you have a scan card you you're allowed right. in the building. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're not, I I deactivate it very quickly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> good, well, I get good people get scared off easy. The crooks, you know, they yes, they and never they see the a way around that it's here yeah. them. And and it's not like an everyday thing, right? To have them coming in. Um, all that, but I mean, it's a concern. It's a concern everywhere, and it's it's one of those things where you balance. We're teaching our kids to be good people. We're teaching them to be respectful, help people. You know, their hands are full. Help them carry and everything. But then we're also saying, except if they're outside the store, don't do that. Um, so it's big signals. But you know, having an SRO and having access uh, with. You know, her situation, the NSR would not have been able to prevent that. But having kids truly understand, don't let people in. Um, that'll be a ongoing thing. I think yeah. there are darlings that are hiding from lightning right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be an ongoing situation. It, it is, and usually it's not ever out of a bad condition, right? They just, they want to help. So. Anyway, that's part of my wish list. I know that an SRO is not facility, but I figured I'd throw that on there. Well, you had it originally on there. I know we, as you said, you have an SRO, but that's a dual dual role. I mean, they're a teacher, so the reality is they can't be at the doors. Right. And sometimes having a full time SRO is even just having a vehicle in the front is a deterrent. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's just so sort of full transparency with the board. I mean, I have access to all the schools in the county, and every school. For the most part, with the exception of us, is the only one that does not have one. So I think with where we are in society, it may not prevent it. I'm sorry for what happened to your daughter. Um, it may have not prevented that situation, but by having a vehicle throughout the course of the day it may have been a deterrent. Yeah, and that's been something with APD, at least, like after over the last six months, being able to get them to kind of be more present in our neighborhood, um, driving around both of our schools, being parked at certain times. 
but usually that's during a heightened situation, yeah. right? Um, and so being able to get it constantly. At night, there is typically an APD officer in our lot, um, but now that they've put that um, camera on site over at Payless, I see them less. Um, and that's, that's great, but I love them to be here during the daytime. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've looked into trying to partner with APD on that uh, for arrival and dismissal and, um, you know, the cost of even having someone there for just an hour right now, that is restrictive for us. Um, looking at LA, their SRO is partially funded by LA PD. Um, and so being able to have that is not really something within our scope, right? Um, but then we have a lot of these schools coming to us saying, oh, you guys have this policy, you have this. How are you doing that? You have money, how are you not? Um, and so that's that's my biggest push on the assignment. I did put up mine and seal of my priorities, right? Um, I, I think it is really important for us to get that. Um, I just don't yet know how to do sustainable funding. I know Spanish schools, they go as far as they get, they have officers from arrest is coming. They're paying there. So the officers are working when they're not working. Right. So they're not getting overtime pay, they're getting their actual pay, you know, under uh, eight hours of the day. Yeah. So at least, I mean, for me, that's one of my top three, if not my top one. It might not, for right now, may not be two SROs, but at least one full time that three days that individual's here, and then the other two days they're at the other campus. I believe that's a start for now. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. There's a multitude of others, so. Can I ask you, Go I'm sorry, a question on some of the other things then. So um, some of these things are like new flag poles I saw. Just a thought because scouting's big in, you know, in my life. Um, have, and you know, all of the kiddos, cadets have to do so much community service. Is that something that I'm looking at like a scout unit, like for an Eagle project, like I know Claire's doing something here to help out the school with her uh, gold award and stuff. Is that something that we could reach out to other community people in the community and say, you know, this is one of our thoughts. And if you're looking for an idea, you, you know what I mean? Is that anything that we could can do or? Um, I, think, I mean, obviously that's a great idea um, and making those connections. I know you are pretty well connected and I know you're pretty well connected with those type of groups. Um, for us, we've had a single project uh, that helped build a um, plaza around our flagpole, um, but we weren't able to kind of get that funding for the flagpoles. Um, honestly, my biggest concern with getting the funding for the flagpoles or getting them is going to be the removal of the old and the installation of the new. Um, and trying to find community resources that know how to do that, right? Um, you, you go online and you're trying to find the new uh, flagpoles and everything, and they're all these uh, telescopic, it's great, you know, this, but how do you get it installed? Where's your installation services? So um, that would be part of that. Uh, scouts responsibility okay that would be part of that project for them they, they have to go through and do all of the research right. from, and you know, the extensiveness of what needed to be done at the time when Evan was mm -hmm. working on his yeah. and what the ROTC department wanted it to look like is why he went uh, no I'm stepping away from this project because yeah. there was way too much for one kid yeah and I mean really for us at each campus, we just need a new pool um, that the rigging is going to work. It's going to hold up to you know the wear and tear that naturally comes from that. And it would be great to be able to have light pools that were illuminated at night. Um, we used to have that at the elementary, but we kept struggling with the lights being removed by neighbors. Um, I'm sure they needed to borrow them. They just never brought them back. And so, you know, some of the new poles, they've got the lights on the very top. They're solar powered. Mm -hmm. There's no wiring or anything. And so that's, that's kind of on the dream list 
of that. But um, if we could find community partners or, you know, going for the Eagle Scout or the Golden, Golden, Golden Award, Woo, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I am always in favor of kids getting to have that opportunity. Uh, we've had a few Scout projects around here. Um, they've done a lot of great things for us. And so, yeah, this is one if we, as a board or community members, can help connect it, that would be great. And sometimes and spending all of it. Yeah, and sometimes they go to like you know Lowe's and Lowe's helps them out and gives donations. donations and stuff. But the but the scout themselves d does all of that. All right, let's connect with them. <laughs> New scouts. Let's find some more. <laughs> Thank you for providing the sheet. I think ideally it would be great to review this. Um, maybe we can uh, reassess this and bring this back in another meeting or so. This just gives us something. I know this was presented beforehand, but we can dig a little bit deeper into it if we need to to kind of help us with strategic planning moving forward. But I think ideally that would be a good thing to see if what projects we can and can't do, what are we aligned with, what is the funding resources, and all that stuff, what we can and what we can't have it. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've had several of these lists, right, that we've been offering right off. I did not give you guys the uh, pictures of all the roofs and all that stuff as part of mm -hmm. the list. Uh, we've got most of those replaced, so uh, we're doing well there. But I think being able to see the connections and networking that's available at least at this table, as well as being able to put some of this out to our families. Um, you know, yesterday we put out, hey, we need some donations for prom fire. Um, and we pretty much have everything and more than we already asked for. You know? oh, that was just recent. Yeah, that, I mean, that was within the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And our families and community members, if they know what we need, mm -hmm. um, can help. But also with this, right, having to do research on some of those things and then get that message out there. We got some other fires to be putting out as well. So. Uh, I think that's going to you know, help empower our board and families. Can we put, Mr. President, can we put a time frame on that? As opposed to, I'm, I'm not the type of person to call a meeting to call a meeting. I think if you want to, we'll come back to this in a month or two, as opposed to just even open it ended. Do you have a preference? I'm happy to move forward with the, with the month. We can look at this in a month, or unless you have objections, do something. I, don't, yeah, I would say putting it on the November agenda. Um, next month we've got fall break and um, oak lights and a lot going on, so okay. you're not going to see Could much. Could this be like a quarterly thing? Sure, I can add it to the board activity calendar. That's not great. Quarterly would be better. Yeah. Okay, quarterly works. A lot, a lot of these things have a lot of moving parts to them. Right. Right. So many. And I just want six months to July, and we're talking about still helping and give me something that we need, you know, here we are in you know, the next academic school year and we haven't made a decision. Yeah, well, and we, I began the preliminary budget part in um, late November, early December. And so in January, that's where some of that project shifting around will start to. So, um, but yeah, I think that one there with the quarterly. I know one or two years, I believe that we had an attachment to the budget breaking down um, all of the CapEx projects that were included. Uh, of course, you know, we, of course, these people charge us for the work, so, and uh, we don't want to create additional work. But, uh, sometimes that helps because, you know, when you look at the, uh, the spreadsheet, um, it doesn't really jump out at you what some of the projects are. Of course, now with the COVID, the ESSER funds, when I mean, you kept track of that, we have to. But so, yeah, it's uh, sometimes uh, what we're spending that money on is a little nebulous. I say, the last couple of years, yeah, track and gym and yeah, HVAC. We spent a lot of money on uh, <laughs> yes. people, on everything in the last couple of years. Uh, so. Yes, and some schools are still struggling with how to spend their COVID money. Our school has 4.6% left. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, we plan for a quarterly um, of that review of the. Uh, um, I'm going 
practice of so these are ideas of list of things that we'll be looking at here in the school. Don't say that prints pretty that's very small print. Yeah, I'm so glad I can fix my color coding. It looks much better on a computer I'm than a little that's a shade blind too. So she so warned so me and asked me to use the colors that I would I tried to blow it up a little bit, but I couldn't quite do it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next thing on the agenda here is our, our board calendar tab. tab. That is it's really a small print there. Uh -huh. That's For our time. annual conflict of interest disclosure. Oh, yeah, that's what I have oh, next. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very good print. Uh, did I get you all of this? This is what it's we have. It's in there. So there's a conflict of interest disclosure, and then we have this as well. Okay. Yeah, that's just kind of that today calendar. Okay. It's also a really impact on these cases. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have to I will also put out there publicly so that everybody understands we, are, we do not violate open door law or get into any gray territory that may have been in the news recently with the um, public access counselor. Um, any of our documents that we are using right now are not ever anything that we make action on without doing an open forum. I, sorry that I have to put the little asterisks on things that are neighbors so down kind of to the well, south and making some interesting choices. Because I had it. I mean, I just had it in my hand a minute ago. Yes. But, hey, I just keep learning. I, I get to meet with the public access counselor, uh, I think you do it like once a semester in the Center Association. And so, you know, he gets to make sure that we are all very well versed in what open door law is and is not. I like that's okay. For sure. It's great. Um, okay. Yes. That's great. Look at that AC. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. 70 degrees. Yeah, that's the new complaint where people are saying, oh man, it's a woman. Hopefully we just get some rain. Oh, it's been raining. Oh, it's 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 been raining. Yeah. 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 I will make sure yeah. we all see yeah. this yeah. is our yeah. assurance. I read it on the board of the thing. All right, thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. Is this just a, you don't have to discuss this right now, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, does anyone have any further discussion at all? If not, I want to thank everyone for attending a board meeting this evening. It looks like we're going to the second session, so we'll give about five minutes or so. Our next scheduled meeting is actually on Halloween, Tuesday, October 31st. Oh, everybody Right at the bottom, it says October 31st, Halloween. I mean, you guys can move it. I have to be sure for treating. Thank you so much for coming. At 6 p.m. Oh, okay. And we, we don't have a lot of visitors.